past week, a multi-million dollar lawsuit was filed against three key investigators in the Jacob Wetterling case, including the current Stearns County Sheriff, John Sanner. The lawsuit says Sanner, along with BCA agent Kenneth McDonald and former Stearns County Captain Pam Jensen, conspired to defame and try and pin the Wetterling abduction on St. Joseph resident Daniel Rassier. Rassier was publicly named as a person of interest in the case in 2010. It was in 2015 that the FBI identified a new person of interest in the Wetterling case, Danny Heinrich. Last fall, Heinrich confessed to kidnapping and murdering Jacob, as well as the 1989 abduction of another boy, Jared Shirel. Heinrich is currently serving 20 years in prison on child porn charges. The lawsuit seeking more than $2 million has been filed on behalf of Daniel Rassier and his mother. And joining us now is one of the attorneys that filed that lawsuit, Mike Patton. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Jose. All right, let me ask you this. It's hard to sue the police. I think most people agree it should be hard to sue the police. What makes you think that this lawsuit filed in federal court can work? Because the evidence is so clear they misled a uh, Stearns County judge to secure the search warrant. It, it couldn't be more clear. They left their fingerprints all over everything. And you can't do that. You cannot, this is the 2010 search warrant in which they dug up the rest of the That's farm. correct. You cannot lie to a judicial official or mislead to secure a search warrant. So that's a much different thing than, for example, if someone's being interrogated in an interview or something. Okay. So you can't do that. That's and a violation what, what of the law. What specifically were the lies in that search warrant? Well, I, I detail them in my complaint, but perhaps the, the, the most significant one, perhaps, is the fact that they actually told, that was actually submitted to the judge in the warrant application that our client was a subject of an Interpol investigation. That was completely false. All right, and Interpol, as I understand it, is sort of the FBI of sort of Europe. In other words, right. they, they go, you know, a big European yeah. police agency. They assist law enforcement around the world in that sense, but they don't conduct their own investigations. So we knew right away that that was false, and frankly, the media figured that out before we did. Um, because the warrant documents were released publicly in September of 2016 after Heinrich went belly up. So. All right. I, you know, I think most of people who follow any true crime story can think of investigations that went astray from the O.J. case on, yet people haven't gone exactly after the police. Again, you think it's because of this search warrant specifically at your grounds? Well, I, I think that this will be a seminal case. It's going to be a seminal case in Minnesota. I think it'll be a seminal case nationally. I don't think it's difficult for people to understand that police will lie about cases of excessive force or mislead. And, and there's numerous examples when you have technology and video evidence that shows you have a police report submitted that's a complete contradiction to the, to the video. I don't think it's a tremendous leap to believe that at times, not always, but at times, law enforcement can submit information to judges that, aren't, that, is, that is not true to achieve the goal of getting a search warrant. So I don't think that's a tremendous leap, but I have no doubt that uh, we will meet that burden of proof. And within the four corners of this complaint, I can assure you that every allegation of substance that's contained herein is supported by strong evidence. All right. Is it the fact that Daniel Rassier was publicly named as a person of interest? They investigated an awful lot of people in this case uh, who were under scrutiny for a long time. Is that really what makes the difference here? Oh, that yeah. his name was put out there publicly? Yes, but in addition, they decided to go after him in 2004. Between 2004 and 2010, there was no evidence developed, zero evidence that indicated that he was the perpetrator. They should have realized at that point that they were Whistle and Dixie. They did not do that. And I want to be clear about something so your listeners understand and, and Minnesotans understand. And, and look, I, I know that this is a, this is, Minnesotans are, are very passionate about this case. I realize that. And that put, puts additional pressure on us. But I want people to understand that my client has no criticism whatsoever with the fact that he was investigated initially. That's fine. And of course, he was investigated and they realized he had nothing to do with it. Even Jerry Wetterling was, was investigated. I don't think anybody could criticize that either. So he and that's was, true. Yeah, he was vetted early on, and they decided that he had nothing to do with it. And I think a lot of that, Esme, had to do with the fact of the two vehicles he identified right away that he saw on his this property that Astrid. day. Right. right. You know, um, I do think it's important that, and I want to make clear that, that uh, the attorney for uh, Stearns County and law enforcement say, as far as they're concerned, they believe that their clients will be exonerated and that they were just simply doing their job. So right. I want to make that out yeah, there. And that's fine. And I mean, they'll probably say something like, Sheriff Sanders is a great man. Maybe he's the greatest human being ever born. And my response to that is fine, fine. Well, they're saying that they were just doing their job. Let's their look at the evidence, though. Okay. Well, we'll response. see that, I guess, in court. Well, Mike okay. Patton, 
Fascinating case, very unusual case, obviously, and, and a very unusual lawsuit. Thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate your Thanks time. Thanks for this having morning. me.